Okay, fellow Vault Dwellers, it's Angry Turtle, and today I have for you detailed breakthrough and analysis of gameplay elements, of gameplay mechanics of Starfield, as this is the most important part for me. I'm not going to go over everything that is revealed in the trailer. I focus on what is the most important part for me the gameplay itself, the mechanics implemented, the character progression, vehicles, space combat, space travel, combat on the planets, the generation of the terrain, the elements that are borrowed from different games. And this is the focus on this video. And let's go over it. First, if you want to say something about graphics, it does look like a solid improvement over everything we had so far in Bethesda games. It does look much better than Fallout 4 or Fallout 76. And in the same time, I want to say it is clear resemblance of the engine used for Fallout. Therefore, it is a Fallout engine. It is a creation engine, Mark III or something like that. Here you can see already in the bottom corner, your health bar, your weapon that's equipped. You have frag grenades, that, that's a classic for Bethesda games, frag grenades as default and a pistol. On the left, we have a compass, more classical compass, not the one that we have in Fallout that used to be on the middle, more classical. And what's interesting here, there is O2, CO2. Therefore, there is something involved in like maybe some planets without oxygen. As on this footage, you don't really see your oxygen draining. Then there is a scanning, which is basically like No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky is using very similar technology, I would say, very similar game mechanics. It's good. It adds some depth into the game. You can see resources, then you can harvest them as well. You can see what's your scanning range, current biome, and on the right, automatically your weapon will be changed to the cutter, which as well has ammo, therefore it will be draining some kind of energy in order for you to harvest resources that you can see around. Most likely you'll be able to, up to a degree, manipulate the terrain, as it's the name, cutter. It would indicate that. And in the same time, wherever you open the scanner, we can see details about the planet, like temperature, seven, I think it's Celsius. Seven in Celsius will be quite cold, but not freezing. Then 1% O2. That's way below what we have in our atmosphere. It's like 20 times lower than what you expect to be required to breathe. Therefore, there is basically no oxygen. Therefore, you cannot go out of the suit. And gravity is half, about half of Earth gravity. I, I like those stats, I think, and I hope they will be significant, like gravity for jumping, O2 for amount of oxygen that you need from your suit and temperature, probably some other protection, similar to No Man's Sky. Like No Man's Sky have this stuff implemented very well. If Bethesda borrowed a lot from that game, it will be good. It will be really good. Now let's take a look further. Here we have like harvesting of the resources. I don't see any ammo being drained. Therefore, I would say it's either very low drain on the energy when harvesting, or maybe it's some other mechanics that not finished yet. As well, you can see here a very small amount of experience when you research a location, that's directly followed. That's directly followed. That's exactly what we have in Fallout. I don't think other games are doing it in the same way. As well, the quick, quick wheel, so so-called quick wheel that we have in Fallout here is simplified to just four options. You can change the weapons. If you will focus on the gunplay, it seems to be exactly the same mechanic and the same basic idea as Fallout is using. Like, it's a, I, I cannot really see much of a difference. Maybe slight improvement, like aiming, the weapon recoil, the reload itself, the timing of stuff. It's all a 
exactly the same for me as well. Here, grenade, the frag grenade di did almost nothing, which is followed. It's followed. That, that's direct copy of followed universe. Grenades, frag grenade does about nothing. Uh, the weapons, mechanics, reload seems to be the same as on followed. Then we have lock picking. That's here is diggy picking. And you can see a little bit more advanced than we have in Fallout. Fallout is much more simplified. Therefore, it will be a little bit more creative in order to get all this stuff. Then further on the combat, enemies has, have levels. And it seems that they can have different levels. They have a simple health bar as well. I would expect enemies eventually to be scaled to your level. I cannot see our level in this gameplay it doesn't seem to show anywhere on the screen and here jetpacking there is a jetpack in use and actually when you look at those animations of the jetpacks let's take a look one more time it does look much more as no man's sky than follow jetpacking then it's interesting they going into After upgraded jetpacking towers, here we have a quick look over the city that is huge it seems like contain a lot of details, a lot of NPC. It's hard to tell how many of those NPC will have any type of dialogues, interactions. And here, the watch upgraded Pip Boy. It's an evolution of Pip Boy into Apple Watch. And what's very important for me here, you can see the faces. It's a huge upgrade. Faces and NPCs. It's a huge upgrade compared to Fallout games. I do like it. I do like it a lot. Going further, we have character creation. This is a, like about the body, face, all the visuals seems very similar to Fallout 76. Of course, the interface is different. It's more modern, I mean, not modern, futuristic. Not even a modern futuristic interface. You can use some standard stuff like in Fallout from like pre customized. Then look at those body elements muscular, thin, heavy, exactly triangle from Fallout 76. But we have something more. We can choose body type and walking style. Then there is some additional bonuses like improvements compared to what we have in Fallout 76, which is always good. More options is always always better than face creation. In that case, it was looking like a little bit more simplified than Fallout. And that's important now. Doesn't look like we have anything resembling special. There is no special that you can set. They choose a little bit different options for character choices, progression, skills. A lot of them is very similar. It's just a little bit different way we obtain them. Therefore, first we can choose background that comes with like predetermined free skills that you will get as a starter skills based on your background, which is quite cool. I'm missing type of a background in any other games, followed games that we usually cannot choose background. Here you can. Then this is really, really cool. I don't know how impactful it will be. It doesn't look like it's a huge impact apart from starting bonus based on your background you are choosing. Maybe some choices in dialogues. Background it's really hard to tell. But starting skills, it's already something. Some now after that, we have traits. Traits are really cool. As you can see, some are exclusive. If you choose introvert, that's basically like a lone wanderer then you cannot choose extrovert anymore. Then this is cool. And you can have free traits. Basically something you'll have through your gameplay and always stays with you. For example, race enlightened. You grew up as a member of the enlightened. You gain a significant discount at the organization store, but lose access to Sanctum Universum store can't be combined with any other religion trait. And some of them are very unique and fun, like Serpent's Embrace. Grab Jumping provides a temporary boost to health and endurance, but health and endurance are lowered if you don't continue jumping regularly. Like an addiction, can't be combined with any other religion trait. Therefore, it's another religion trait. But it, it is cool, like... You will need to keep jumping all the time to have bonuses. Or you go backwards if you stop jumping. But that's original, I need to say.
after that we have the skill tree and here as i said no special but in the same time the skills are in categories similar to special you just don't have anything like setting your special but in the same time you can see that there are like four ranks for most of them similar to upgrading pair cards to one star two star three star you have skill points required to unlock those then you basically need to level up in order to keep unlocking it and you can see like for example sniper certification rank one will give you scope weapons are steadier and have less sway and That's then we go over another one rapid reload and this one is upgraded in here to rank three out of four and what you can see as well on the ref there is like a challenge progress it's looked like in order to unlock another upgrade you need to reload 150 empty magazines and then invest the skill point to upgrade it and what it does unlock gain a chance to reload your weapon twice as fast as normal it's not always twice as fast it's a chance what i don't necessarily like and after that we have heavy weapons certification and when we unlock the rank 4 gain 30 damage resistance while aiming down sides with a heavy weapon that's a very similar perk if you play fallout 76 it's about exactly the same as available but as well challenge kill 250 enemies with a heavy weapon to get it it's at least i think that how it works you need to do the challenge in order to be able to upgrade the perk and there is demolitions similar to demolition expert combined with grenadier in fallout explosive do 30 percent more damage and have 30 percent larger radius i'm curious if explosives will be actually good in this game from the trailer they don't look like but who knows and here we have ballistics and it's look like challenge is completed and rank 4 can be unlocked ballistic weapons range is increased by 30 percent therefore all those perks looks quite cool and here we have zoom on these ballistics you can see the previous ranks provides you 10 percent more damage 20 percent more damage 30 percent more damage and then rank four now it says available as the challenge is completed therefore i think i'm accurate about it and there are different markers next to the rank maybe challenge is only required for every second rank which is possible i cannot tell 100 percent and here's upgraded max out level i like the animations too like the perks and here we have similar stuff like in fallout games about upgrading weapons but one thing is different and i i'm not sure if i'm happy about that so you can see no research in progress resource extraction one in progress which indicates they will be there will be time required to unlock stuff i hope the time is reasonable i'm not a big fan of having to wait a lot of time in single player games in order to unlock stuff if this will be like a day in real life to unlock stuff that would be crazy if it's like matter of minutes then it's okay it's hard to tell because we cannot see the timer anywhere on this page we can see that project is in progress but we cannot see how much it will take and unfortunately there is zero weapon mods unlocked for the weapon then we cannot take a look on those and again weapon gameplay the same as followed games basically and after that we have camp building and you can see different view grill build mode hold to exit there is cargo crew power production therefore there will be some kind of extractors there will be power required uh, we build some functional stuff and most likely stuff to will be there to just look cool i'm not the best camp builder but i'm happy with that camps are important and i like this combination of the biomes that you can do from the upper view like from the camera above your camp it will be so helpful it's missing in other followed games when you can only like from the character perspective build everything this is nice this is nice definitely improvement to camp building of course there are requirements for resources aluminum iron and operating cost in power then if you build bigger house you need more power to keep it up and running and generally i think i like it I like what I see about camp building. Away from home. 
it's, it's really decent and graphics are good. And here we can see a little bit more build up. Some structures, most likely like containers. It's looked like we'll be able to store some stuff in our camp and set up some production, most likely for resources. And yeah, I'm all for it. The graphics are a definite improvement. Inside we have workbenches, which is good. And now the ships and the space. That That is a big part. That is a big part. I like how they look. The spaceships does look amazing, especially from the outside. Then I'm happy with that. And now let's take a look on the space combat. Oh, we have customization, of course, to the look and layout, which is good. Uh, I'm curious how overpowered we can make them, or is it just like visual customization, or we can make a beast? I hope we can make a beast. And now about the space and flying the ship. It does look like realism was dropped from the previous announcement about Starfield. There was a lot of talk about space flight being realistic. It's definitely not in here. As you can see, it's not at all. Like you can turn it and it keeps the speed. If you don't know if you will do that in actual space, if you use thruster to do 180, you will keep going backwards. You will not suddenly change direction. Then. There is no realism at all. I'm pretty sure that Todd was put under the decision. Do you want it to be real or fun? And we end up most likely with fun. I hope with fun. Seems like combat is quite difficult as the ship is turning slowly. Let's put back this clip with space combat. Yes, yeah, you can see the steering, especially from the inside view. You slowly drag. You slowly drag and your ship turns and your ship turns much slower therefore following the target will be quite tricky i hope not too difficult as not everyone enjoys space combat as much but i do bet there will be some kind of difficulty settings to make it simpler for people that do not like space combat i, I personally i do like space combat as well standard stuff like a boost the speed it's like, it's not realist at all. It's standard stuff that do work in other space games. And I'm absolutely fine with that. It does look like we have some kind of a force shield around the ship. You can see it on the right. And there is as well HP of the hull. And that's as well, quite standard for every type of space combat flight simulators. And on the left, it does look like we have some kind of a start laser, ballistic ammo, missile. And then there is shield, there is gravity, and I cannot read what the first one. Is it acceleration, speed, power, something? Something must be in there, but that's cool. A lot of stuff that is standard in other games, it's implemented here. If they will implement it well, it will be all good. As graphically, it does look amazing. I hope the console will be able to handle that. We'll see, there's no way to tell before the game will get released. If they optimize it well, it will work. And space combat will be fun. The, those are the mechanics of the space combat. And now we can see, we can dock. We can be docked. Flight system, weapon system, web support system, everything standby. You can undock, you can board. Therefore, you can like enter the space station or the mothership when you are docked, which is quite cool mechanics. Uh, I'm happy with that. It's only like a really quick snapshot here for the docking procedure. Therefore, we don't know much more about it. Is it our mothership? Is it like ship that belongs to any corporations and we can use it? I don't know that. Definitely there is our ship docked to bigger ship on that other picture. Experience during the combat on the ground and in space. It does look like it contributes to our experience, not separate for the ship. And we can see that we can land anywhere on the planet. You have the survey, basically what you discovered about the planet so far. You can see all the statistics of the planet, the atmosphere, everything else the fauna flora 
water, you can scan the planet. This is actually very similar again to No Man's Sky, which is good because it works very well with No Man's Sky, then there is no reason it would not work with Starfield. And on the site, you can see that you can go back to Galaxy Map. Therefore, it is Galaxy Map available. And as it was said, there is over a thousand planets. Therefore, there is a lot of planets that are generated by the game, not custom design, not made by a human. But it's not a bad thing because we clearly see that like cities like New Atlantis will be custom made and then we'll have plenty of planets that are using the automatic generation. And combination of those two, in my opinion, will give amazing opportunities for the Starfield. And there you can see, you can press X to land on the planet when you are looking at it. Therefore, I'm expecting landing to be automatic and not manual, but we'll see about that. You can see the star system, different planets, different moons that you can land on. And then we can zoom out and multiple systems that you can travel in between. And now we have a quick look on different planets and they do look very distinct cities amazing views amazing amount of details my only worry always is can console handle that i certainly hope it can it's next gen by the way then let's hope it can handle it and let's hope my pc can handle it look at those planets it's amazing for procedural generation it does look great a lot of work must have been put into it and I'm happy with that. I cannot wait to explore. And of course, let me know what you think about game mechanics. Are you happy that it's a lot of Fallout and a lot of stuff borrowed from No Man's Sky? Are you happy with this hybrid? As I am. I am happy. And that being said, thank you lots for watching and see you all in the next one.